Hey everybody and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host Michael Montalvo and together we will swim through the river of time and find out what makes today truly unique. Today we examined March 4th. For all you astronomers out there, tonight is the night. Grab your telescopes and point them in the direction of Betelgeuse and Rigel, because it's showtime. No, not that Betelgeuse, the star one. To see what I'm talking about, look for Orion's belt, and go midway down the sword, and there you will find the Orion Nebula. The year was 1774, and on this day, March 4th, the patron saint of this podcast... William Herschel, spots the Orion Nebula. The nebula, which is an enormous cloud of dust and gas roughly 1,300 light years away, has been described as angel's breath against a frosted sky by Stephen James O'Meara. It's also known as M42 and is particularly special as it is a stellar nebula where new stars are being born. But don't worry, Hollywood. These stars aren't coming for you. (laughs) That's a terrible joke. The Orion star cluster can be found here some 40 light years in diameter and is a site that, according to earthsky.org, is giving birth to what could be a thousand stars. And that's amazing indeed, but here's the kicker. You can see this with the naked eye on a dark, moonless night. But if you want to get a better look, Grab a telescope or even a pair of binoculars, and you will witness this wonder of the universe for yourself. And now we get to the main topic of today's discussion. In the United States, March 4th was once known as Inauguration Day, a day where traditionally the president would be sworn into office. On this day, newly elected presidents would give a speech, an inaugural address, if you will. And today, I'm going to tell the story of one such man who made that speech. Normally, here is the part where I give a bit of background for the man in question, which, if you even glanced at the title, you know to be William Henry Harrison, the ninth president of the United States. So, here is the background. William Henry Harrison was born February 9, 1773, on his family's plantation in Virginia. His father was Benjamin Harrison, who I'm sure I don't have to mention, but just for everybody's convenience, was one of the men who signed the Declaration of Independence and also a one-time governor of Virginia. He was not initially interested in politics, Harrison the Younger. He studied medicine until he didn't, dropping out instead to join the military, which in this case means the army. In his first military career, he rose to the rank of captain and took command of Fort Washington in Ohio. He met Anna Tuthill Sims, and in 1795 they eloped because her father did not think that a military career was conductive to marriage. The pair would go on to have ten children, however, only four of them would survive to see their father's presidency. Fun fact, one of their sons, John Scott Harrison, would later become a congressman from Ohio, and his son, Benjamin Harrison, would become the 23rd president, so politics ran in that family. Harrison resigned from the army in 1798, and then-President John Adams named him as a Secretary of the Northwest Territory, then a year later was made the first Congressional Delegate of the Northwest Territory, where he negotiated treaties with Native Americans. He convinced them to hand over millions of acres of land, and then used U.S. forces to remove them from that land. They would ultimately fight over this, though, at the Battle of Tippecanoe, And despite the troops lost or the perseverance of the Native Americans, the battle's outcome was quote-unquote inconclusive. 
he would capitalize on this, though, during his future presidential campaign. So he served as governor over the territory and then rejoined the army for the War of 1812, which will need an episode all to itself. Okay, are you ready? I'm going to throw a bunch of dates at you really quickly. Dinner and a movie? Axe throwing? Walk in the park? Zoo? Game night? Netflix and chill? Do any of those sound good? In 1814, he resigned as a major general. In 1816, he was elected to the House of Representatives, and in 1819, he became a state senator. In 1825, he began what would be a three-year term as a U.S. senator, but resigned to be the U.S. minister to Colombia. What is a U.S. minister? He was an ambassador. Finally, in 1836, he received the nomination for the presidency from the Whig Party. And I'm trying to make a hair joke here, but I can't think of one. Leave me the obvious one I missed in the comments. Side note. The Whig Party was founded in the 1830s as an opposing party to the Jacksonian Democrats. That's Andrew Jacksonian. Creating what would essentially be a two-part system. To put everything in its most basic form, they stood for protective tariffs, national banking, and federal aid for internal improvements. They were not anti-slavery, but they were not not anti-slavery. In 1854, anti-slavery Whig Party members would branch off and create the Republican Party. Prominent members were Henry Clay, William Henry Harrison, Abraham Lincoln, and Daniel Webster, a lawyer whom you might know, is famous for taking a case against the devil for the soul of Jabez Stone. It was a whole thing, and apparently it was about patriotism. So, back to Harrison. He was the Whig nominee, but the campaign proved too hairy for him, and he lost. In 1840, he was nominated again, and this time prevailed despite being mocked for his advanced age of 67. He took the oath and was sworn into office at age 68. The year was 1841, and on this day, March 4th, William Henry Harrison became the ninth president of the United States. But surely that's not all, is it? While this is enough to make this man our topic for today's episode and earn him a spot in history... This is not the reason Americans today remember William Henry Harrison. On his inauguration day, he delivered the longest inaugural address by any president. Added to this was the inclement weather, which, if you don't know, means abnormal climate conditions like rain or extreme cold due to the time of year, hail, high wind, things like that. We can't be certain, but we know that because of his speech, which ran over 8,000 words, William Henry Harrison went to bed sick that night with a cold. The cold would go on and develop into pneumonia, which would end his life April 4th, 1841, 31 days after his inauguration. He was the first president to die in office. First Lady Anna Harrison became the first presidential widow to receive a pension from Congress, at the time about 25000 or a year's salary, or what Harrison would have made while in office. She also received free postage on all of her mail. She would live another 20 years, and today, the couple are buried together in North Bend, Ohio. And that's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps steer this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you are watching this on YouTube, you can find the audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. Thank you to Matt Van for providing us a picture of the Orion Nebula, which will be used for our thumbnail. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. <laughs>